The sermon comes from the book of John, chapter 1, starting at verse 35. This is the text and the context of the entire sermon. St. John, chapter 1, starting at verse 35. Listen to the story carefully. The next day, again, Jesus was standing with two of his disciples, and he, looked, and he looked as Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard this and said, and they believed. Jesus turned and saw them follow him and he said, What do you seek? And they said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? And he said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two of who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, are you Simon, the son of John? You shall be called Cephas, which means Peter. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee and he found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethesda, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Peter said to him, Well, come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said to him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guile. Mm -hmm. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Mm -hmm. And Jesus answered, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. And Nathanael answered, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. And Jesus Answer, because I said I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You shall see greater things than these. And he said to him, truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the word of God for the people of God. Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hand that wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee. Ready, my God. Thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me. Spirit divine, open my ears that I may hear voices of truth. Thou sin does clear, and while the wave Notes fall on my ear, everything false will disappear. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my ears, illumine me, spirit divine. always know 
what we see when we see it. We don't always know what we hear when we hear it. We don't always know what we think when we think it. But God, God always calls us to come and see what he has prepared for us. We are blessed when we come and we see. When we were small children, we saw with the eyes of small children. Amen? But when we became adults, when we became mature, when life had shaken and taken and seasoned us, we saw things a little bit differently. We heard things a little bit more keenly. And we began to think and understand that God helps us to be wise. The scripture tells us that Philip found Nathaniel and told him that we found the blessed one, the profound man that the prophets talked about. And now we should go and meet this majestic and divine human being who came to take away the sins of the whole world. Come, let us go see Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph, the teacher, the rabbi, the healer, the priest, the servant, the son of God. Come, let's go see. But Nathaniel hesitated. You know where, where he went to? Nathaniel went to his unbelief. That's where he went. He didn't go to see. He went to his unbelief. He went right to skepticism, and he went to doubt. He went to the common nature of poor judgment and ridicule. That's where he went. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes we do that. We, we, we look upon something, and we just make a quick judgment. Amen? He can't be all that. She can't be all that. We judge the book. by its cover, without even opening the book. You see, I could have put a false cover on this, could have been a cookbook. You, you don't know. <laughs> but we judge it. It says Bible, it must be the Bible. Sometimes you have to look deeper into a thing or to a person before you judge it. Amen. When we were told, you know, you want to you see that man who's tall and dark and handsome, we neglect the short and the fair, those who are not so pretty. Am I talking to anybody in here? Mm -hmm. We make quick impressions on our initial impression of what we see. Now, don't get me wrong. Because you are doubtful and you are full of skepticism, it doesn't always mean that you make it a bad judgment. When we were younger, they told us, look before you jump, amen? They told us to measure twice sometimes three times, and then cut, all right? They told us to be careful what you promise and be careful who you hang out with. Nathaniel said, well, what did you come out of Nazareth? If you go study about Nazareth, Nazareth was a beautiful place. It had water, lakes, and floor. It was beautiful, but it was out of the country, and they didn't give much thought to people out of the rural areas. The same thing happened in other scripture. What good could come out of Bethlehem? Bethlehem was small. It was not very important. Kind of trashy looking. Even today, it don't look like much. Anybody been to Bethlehem? There's not much to look at. What good could come out of Alamogordo? Listen, God can use any place, any situation, any aggregation of these group of people that he wants to, and he can make them shine. Yeah. So Philip, understanding Nathaniel's hesitation, being wise and being patient and being mature and being thoughtful and challenging that statement, he said, well, don't take it from me. Come and see yourself. It's not a bad thing to be cautious, is it? Add up the cost before you commit to something, before you claim something. Where's Susan at? Before you join something, <laughs> check it out. 
Come a couple times. Listen, look, taste, touch before you join stuff. Sometimes we jump into things uh, so quickly that we get caught up in them. It's free here. You be careful what's free. You be careful what's free. Free is not free. Free is not free. Somebody got to pay for it. It just didn't come out of the ether. And if you take it, something's going to be required of you. <laughs> there is a phrase that they say about people who come from Kansas. Is Kansas the show me state? Missouri. Yeah, Kansas. Missouri, I thought about it. Missouri? I'm sorry, people from Kansas. Missouri, show me. These old farmers were not stupid. You promised them something, they said, well, show me. Let me look at it. Let me touch it. Let me kick the tire. Let me feel what it feels like before I give you any of my money. Missouri people are smart. Okay, Nathaniel, don't take my word for it. Come and see. And when he goes to see, Jesus tells Nathaniel about himself and he's amazed. Nathaniel said, how do you know me? <laughs> I've never seen you before. How do you know who I am? I was watching you, Nathaniel. You were under that fig tree talking to the other disciples. And all of a sudden, Nathaniel realized, I'm seeking Jesus and Jesus is seeking me. This is the way it works. God knows who you are. God knows what you've done. God knows what you haven't done. He has searched you from the top to the bottom. God knows who you are. Now you can fool me, you can fool other people, but you can't fool God. Where can you know that God is not? You can't, you can't go nowhere. He formed you. He gonna call you home. He know what you're doing this moment. Jesus tells Nathaniel, Nathaniel this, and Nathaniel is amazed. You see, Jesus is always looking for good company. Just like we're looking for good company, amen? Yes. Jesus is always looking for good relationships. Are we looking for good relationships? Yep. Jesus was looking for good partners to work with him. Aren't we the same way? Owen Chapel, I'm looking for a few good men and a few good women, a few good believers. A few good leaders, a few good followers, a few good teachers, a few good friends to join us before the end of the conference year. It's nice in here. We need to turn this over to somebody while I'm gone. Amen. Don't look at me funny. <laughs> Come August, I'm turning this over to somebody. Well, I'm turning it over to the church, and they're going to select who will come here. When I'm gone, and I'm going to tell you this, and I don't normally do this. Somebody needs to sweep the floors. Somebody needs to make sure napkins are put out. Somebody needs to make sure there's no trash around the church. And if we're out of something, that they get it. Walls? Hello. Thank you. What I have done, you shall do. I said... The standard. The church needs something, I get it. That's what you're going to have to do. It's your church. This will be your responsibility. I'm not going to remind you what to do because I won't be here to do it. You'll have another leader. Whoever God sends, God sends. Whoever he sends, pray for them. Work with them. Love them. Cooperate, collaborate, communicate. Look who God has sent us so far. Sent us two wise elders. One can sing and the other one can love. I don't know if you guys saw that miracle when Doris came in and prayed for Carlos. Carlos is healed and gone on his way. Amen. She just came and prayed. See, she sits quietly and doesn't take a lot of attention to herself because she's a vessel of God. If I asked her to do anything within reason, she would do it because that's what you do. If I asked Melvin to sing anything, 
within reason, he gonna do it. Already mature, already trained, already seasoned. Look what God has done. He said, it's a whole bunch of kids. We ain't got no kids in here, do we? Until God said, I'm gonna send you a whole family. Now, it may not look like much to you, but that family has come to us. We can go to that family. And that family will be a part of our family. Do you understand? This is God's work. Doesn't matter who's standing here. Work with that person. That's how God's work gets done. Do you see what he said about Nathaniel? There is no guile in Nathaniel. That means he wasn't crafty. He wasn't deceitful. He wasn't a, a, a trickster. Jesus knew this. So you trust this man. Because Jesus looked on the inside and not just on Nazareth. Yeah, he was skeptical. He was cautious. What good can come out of Nazareth? Well, come and see. What good can come out of Owen Chapel AME Church? You got to come and you got to see. You will be amazed what God will do between now and when I get to retire. I have a secret for you. You got a whole bunch of people coming from another city to see this church and what we've done. You better be ready. Because they're making plans now to come. You see, the people who come to this church are going to look at you for what they should do. And when they come here, they're going to see, well, here's what human beings do. They look for the faults. <laughs> They look for the weaknesses. That's what humans do. She not all that. He not all that. Well, they could have done it. That's what humans do. But there are no perfect churches, amen? There are no perfect people. And it's just as somebody's looking at you for faults, they got their own faults that they need to take care of. But God is going to send more and more and more people here. Love them when they come. Laugh with them when they come. Embrace them. Feed them. Welcome them. Some of the people are going to stay here for the rest of their life. People ask me, where are you going when, when you look? I'm going to be right here. I'll be right here now. I'm, going. I'm not going anywhere. Doris and Melvin have fallen in love with the Southwest. That'd be bad. Huh? Yeah. I'll be down there worshiping with them one Sunday. They like it here. Now, the mosquitoes in, in Kentucky, oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> huh? And the chickens and the flies, they, they'll tell you. They like it here. I like it here. But whoever God sends, welcome them in. It could be your brother. It could be your sister. We have planned a calendar year that is full and rich with many experiences. There'll be a time when I'll call a meeting or we'll have a program, when we'll have a movie, amen. We'll have a play, amen. We'll have a guest speaker. We'll have events out in the community. We'll invite the community in. Don't take my word for it. Come and see. Eternal Heavenly Father, bless us to be ready when the harvest is brought in. When you send them to us, Lord, let us be ready to welcome them with open arms, with open hearts. Bless them, Lord, to become a part of our family and we become a part of theirs. If you do this, we'll give you the honor, the glory, and the praise in Jesus' name. Open my mouth and let me bear Gladly the warm truth everywhere. Open my heart and let me prepare love with thy children thus to share. Silently now I wait for thee. Ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my heart. Illumine Spirit Divine 
Thank you for joining us here at the uh, Alma Gordo Owen Chapel Amy Church. A busy little church. If you have liked what you have witnessed today, come and see. Come and join us. Until then, if you would like to send a contribution or a tithe or donation, the information should be on your screen. Until next week, by God's grace, uh, may he bless you and keep you. This is what we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.